Hello and welcome to Addis News Hour. With the news, I'm Shifa Raulaka. Um, we can't give you the detailed information as usual due to some technical glitches that we've just encountered and our sincere apologies for that. But I'm going to give you some of the highlights of the top stories. An Ethiopian scholar says Egypt and the Sudan have been disrupting the tripartite negotiations over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam for lack of political will to resolve the dispute in a cooperative manner. But ironically, Egypt has been accusing Ethiopia of lack of political will to reach an agreement on the issue, while Egypt itself is working aggressively to undermine the AU-led negotiation. The Ethiopian scholar McAdam said Egypt is using an arm-twisting tactic over, uh, over Ethiopia regarding the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Meanwhile, the Minister of Water, Irrigation and Energy, Selashi Bakala, said Ethiopia's intention in the trilateral GERD talk was to discuss new roadmap and ways of data sharing regarding the second filling of the dam. That was designed on regional integration and win-win approach to use the Nile River in equitable and reasonable manner, according to the minister. However, he said Egypt and Sudan stuck to a legal binding agreement. In another story, Damaka Makonin, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Ethiopia, received at his office the newly elected Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Dr. Monique Sanzabaganwa. At the onset, the Deputy Prime Minister congratulated her on the new assignment and affirmed Ethiopia's commitment to supporting her in every way possible. Speaking about the newly held negotiation in Kinshasa, Mr. Demaka said Ethiopia firmly believes in the capability of Africans to solve their problems by themselves. Dr. Monique Sanzabaganwa for her part, appreciated Ethiopia's stance in this regard and reiterated that the AUC is committed to its mantra to African solutions to African problems. Their discussion also included Mr. Damaga's briefing regarding the humanitarian situation in Tigray, where commendable achievements have been registered so far. Now, moving on, Ethiopians and Eritreans made rallies at the state capital square in Colorado state to condemn the treasonous act of the TPLF against the Ethiopian Defense Force. The demo was aimed at calling on the international community to have a clear picture of the situation in Tigray and detach itself from encouraging the supporters of the criminal group. Representatives from both countries or communities rather loaded the ETO Eritrea Peace Accord that ended the 27 years of divisive policies of the TPLF that separated people by deliberately fabricating and exaggerating various fault lines. Besides the communities of the two countries, the Ethiopian American Civic Council, Friends of Ethiopia, and other Ethiopian rights organizations, including Ethiopians living in Denver, and neighboring cities have organized the rallies. And finally, the Ethiopian Airlines has celebrated its 75th anniversary, marking the day it started flight across the world. 75 years ago today, in 1946, Ethiopian Airlines operated its first scheduled flight from Addis Ababa to Cairo via Asmara. Today, the Ethiopian Airlines celebrates its anniversary as one of the most competitive mega carriers in the world. The airliner has extended its best wishes to its valued customers and hardworking employees who made it shine high in the sky. Well, with that, we come to the end of this news edition. Many thanks for watching us and have a blessed night. Thank you.